one of the things that came out of my research, if you truly buy the idea that this is a way of thinking about the world, like the scientific method, it's a way of dealing with the world, right? it's a way of thinking about solving problems in the world, then you should be able to solve not only business problems with it. So one of the things I started thinking about a lot more as I wrote about my research was, how would I take this logic, this way of reasoning, and apply it in a non-business setting, like in a social setting, if you will. So uh, I walked into class one day and I asked people, why can't I buy futures contracts in Rwandan prosperity, right? So why is it that when we try to solve something like poverty or uh, women's progress or uh, education, we seem to think that we need to use a different set of tools than business. So that was one of the questions I had. And I started thinking through, you know, how would an expert entrepreneur actually tackle any of those problems? And, and I gave you the example of Mohammed Yunus already, who is a great example of somebody who thinks exactly like a lot of the expert entrepreneurs that I studied and ended up actually solving a social problem in some ways to a reasonable extent. Of course, there's a lot more work to be done. But at least he showed the one way to solve the problem. And for me, it's, a, it's kind of a, <clears throat> uh, it, it solves two problems in one in the sense that it also lifts people out of poverty and it helps women do it. It empowers women. So I find that very, very uh, uh, close to my heart, if you will. So if you start looking for people who have solved social problems and in a, in a reasonably big way, and you find the same kind of thinking, then it begs the question uh, as to why we would not use business tools. Why would we not use entrepreneurial thinking to solve some of those problems? And that line of thought has led me to an interesting problem that I want to this uh, pose. And that is because a lot of entrepreneurs in the social sector think like entrepreneurs in the for-profit sector. But somehow the funding part of it is so different that it makes the social sector problems very different and difficult. And so one of the things I want to think about is what would have to change in the way we fund problems in the social sector uh, so that entrepreneurial thinking can actually do the kind of uh, development that has, that's been made possible in the for-profit sector in places like India and China. So that's one of the questions that I want to leave people with to think about what would it take uh, to create something that is equivalent to all the different kinds of credit markets uh, and innovative financial instruments that we see in the for-profit sector. I know this is a really bad time to talk about innovative financial <laughs> instruments, but I also think it's a great time for that very same reason that the same innovative uh, mindset that you have in the financial sector, if you could actually take it over to the social sector, I think something, some interesting things can uh, happen. And so I do want to give you just one example or maybe two on that because it's close to my heart and you can decide what to do with it. Um, uh, one example I have is this company called Lumni, uh, which has come up with a venture capital model for funding education in Latin America. Uh, another uh, instrument that I'm looking at is a, a fixed income instrument to fund education in Pakistan. As I mentioned, these are uh, education issues are kind of close to my heart. What I want to talk about is the innovations in funding that are available in the for-profit sector that are not available in the social sector. And not even innovations, um, things that were innovations once upon a time, but things that we take for granted now. They're just efficient ways of funneling um, resources uh, into particular companies and matching up different investors with different companies. For example, uh, let's think about uh, something like, uh, you know, more fuel efficient cars, right? So one of the ways uh, you think about how do you want to think about buying a fuel efficient car, you can check out all the different models that are there and you can hear people pitch why the electric car will be so much better than the hybrid or 
uh, you know, natural gas would be even better, or you can actually, ha you know, turn on CNBC or uh, uh, on CNN on the technology section or something like that, and, and you and you can listen to different people pitch you different things, and th and then you can take your pick. You can spend a little bit more time and do some more analysis or research if you want, and you can say, here's the kind of car I want to buy. You can also think through which uh, which car company you want to invest in. Uh, but there's no channel that I can turn on and hear, you know, two uh, guys from the Congo say, uh, talk to me about how they are going to solve the illiteracy problem in the Congo. And I think through which one do I want to actually back and go home, do a little bit of research, and then a couple of clicks on the computer, and I send the money to that one. We never think about social sector problems in the same way. That's the kind of thing I mean. And let's say one of those two guys in the Congo has a really cool way of solving the illiteracy problem in such a way that the problem stays solved and uh, you know it, it creates a financially self-sustaining model. Uh, there's no way we can just simply create a franchise of 1,200 of those kinds of schools that spread all over Africa or we can import into Brazil. Uh, we don't think about social sector problems though, that way. And we don't have any of the channels, uh, the infrastructure that exists that allow entrepreneurs to not just build ventures, but to grow them and to spread them out uh, and to create variations through competition, things like that. So a lot, a lot of those things, and most of us will recognize those as market mechanisms. Right? They don't exist uh, in the social world. It's like really good, smart people reinvent the wheel all the time in the social sector. So my question really is that the essence of entrepreneurial thinking exists on the side of entrepreneurs building ventures in the social sector, but it seems to be very much lacking on the funding side. And that's where I think I would like to do some work. And some of my colleagues and I are beginning to work on it. And we call this markets in human hope. I just wanted to mention that because I want to leave like uh, everything that I have talked about here on a what to do next problem. And I think for those of us interested in innovative uh, ideas in business and especially uh, the logic of entrepreneurs, uh, that is going to be, for me, I think, the next frontier to think through how do we bring entrepreneurial thinking to the funding side of the social sector. Uh, lots of good stuff are happening on the ground, both on the entrepreneur side, that is the venture building side and the funding side. But I think there's a lot of exciting opportunities on the funding side for entrepreneurs to get in there uh, and do it better.